Hey all today we're going to start talking about the last method of data collection and that is experiments. And so we have some principles that need to in be involved with any experiment and that has to do with these three ideas control, randomization, and replication. And control is what uh, we lack when we do an observational study. We're not controlling anything that's happening. We're just sort of observing and collecting data. In an experiment, we are controlling, um, let's say, what type of medicines people take, uh, what type of foods they eat, uh, whether they exercise or not. We are influencing what the participants are doing, and that's what differentiates an experiment um, from an observational study. We are controlling the environment because we are trying to reduce the effect from uh, variables that we don't want to uh, ruin our results. We need to have randomization, which is different than, than when we are sampling randomly. When we're sampling randomly, we are choosing the people we would like to participate in our survey or in our study. In an experiment, we have people typically volunteer, um, whether it's free or sometimes paid. But so we can't just randomly select people and tell them, hey, we want you to do this experiment. What we will do is after we have our set of volunteers is we will randomly assign them to groups within our experiment. Those groups are what we call treatments. Replication needs, it, uh, our experiment needs to be able to be replicable. Um, usually we take care of this by having multiple participants. That means more than one person is partic participating in each of our groups in an experiment. Um, we wouldn't want to have one person in each group. We want to have multiple people, and that is what we mean by replication. And then you're not required to have this, this principle called blocking, but uh, a lot of good experiments do. Blocking is a way for us to mitigate for factors that are kind of out of our control. For example, let's say we think that the gender of someone will have an effect on the results of an experiment. So we can group our experiment by men and women. And then we can run the same experiment in each group or each block. And this way we can analyze the results for men and then we can analyze the results for women and gender then will not have any influence on our findings. So it's always best to look at that kind of thing uh, using an example. So we, I believe in the last lesson, talked about dogs and cats that were dying. And we'll elaborate a little bit on that and say that we have... Uh, found that there's been some contamination in the pet food, specific brand. And so they've re-engineered their food to make sure that it was safe, but before they can put it on the market, they need to test that it is safe. And so let's talk about the elements or the principles of our experiments as they apply to this idea. So first let's talk about control. We're going to talk about what are the factors of the experiment. These are the things we want to have control over. And in this case, the factor, sometimes there's many. In this case, there's one factor, and it is uh, the type of food that we will be feeding our dogs and cats, our pets. So we are going to want to have some animals try the new food and some animals try a food that we already know to be safe. That was would be what we would call a control group. The factor is the thing that we are controlling. So if we have multiple things we want to make sure we control for, we can have multiple factors. In this case, we're just controlling what type of food the pet is eating. And then we need to talk about the levels of that factor. In this case, we have two levels. We have the new food 
and we have the old food. So we have one factor that has two levels. If we multiply the number of factors by the number of levels, it's pretty simple multiplication there. This gives us the number of treatments, which when I talked about groups earlier, the treatments are the groups uh, in our experiment. So we have two treatments. One group will get new food, and one group will get old food. And you're probably thinking, well, that's the same thing as the levels. Well, once we have more factors or we have more levels, um, the treatments will become more plentiful and also uh, will differ. So we are controlling our experiment by deciding what food the pets eat. We can random randomize our experiment. Let's say we have 36 pets. The way we would bring randomization in here is we would randomly assign, probably the way we would do it, we would, we would randomly assign 18 pets to the new food. And then the other 18 pets who were left over after randomly assigned 18 to the new food would eat the old food. Our replication, like I said, comes from the fact that we have 36 total participants. That means 18 pets are eating new food, 18 pets are eating old food. And so we have replicated eating the new food 18 times. We have replicated eating the, the old food that we know is safe 18 times. Um, therefore, if, for example, one person eating the new food – or not one person, one pet eating the new food gets sick um, and it didn't have anything to do with the food, we have 17 other pets um, that we can see, hey, it didn't have an effect on them. Maybe there was something else going on here. We could also block. Blocking would probably be an important idea because we have cats and dogs and their food is going to be different and their uh, their bodies are different. The way they will react to the food might be different. And so if 30 out of our 36 pets, we have 20 dogs and 16 cats, what we would want to do is we would want to run our experiment on the dogs. So we would take 10 dogs. And give them the new food. And we take 10 dogs and give them the old food. And we'd have eight cats get the new food. And eight cats get the old food. That way we can compare the results of both groups of cats specifically. And we can compare the results of both groups of dogs specifically. This way the type of animal or type of pet is not influencing whether or not we think the new food is safe to eat. So when we are trying to design an experiment, we should identify what factors we want to control, what levels we have uh, for those factors, which will help us create our treatment groups that we can randomly assign our participants to. Uh, we'll want to decide whether or not we can block or whether or not we should block. We don't always have to block. Sometimes it's helpful. And then one way to organize it would be to create a diagram. It's just a way to sort of lay out what does our experiment look like. And so if I were laying out a diagram for this experiment, I have 20 dogs. And I have 16 cats. And so we can show our random assignment. I'm just going to write that random up top here. We're going to randomly assign 10 of each dog and eight cats. And then these would be our treatment groups. So in each 
block these are the two blocks dogs is a block cats is a block in each block we have two treatment groups we have the new food and we have the old food and then what we would do is come back and we would compare my guess would be we could call it the safety of the food And so this is just a way to sort of map out. You can see all the different treatments. You can see there's two different blocks. You can see how many uh, participants are in each treatment. Um, comparing safety, safety would be our response variable. Safety is our response variable. It's the thing where we're trying to measure. And so this is just one way to lay out an experiment to organize your thoughts about uh, your experimental design. So pause here and read this uh, short paragraph about uh, fertilizer, and then we will lay out a little experimental design for uh, this scenario. So the first thing we want to decide is what are our factors for this experiment? The thing we want to control? Well, the one thing we want to control is fertilizer. It's the only thing we're controlling for is what type of fertilizer our tomato plants are going to receive. Uh, we're going to end up with three factor or three levels of that factor. We're going to get a full dose of the fertilizer. Then we're interested in, hey, what happens if we get a half dose? And then we would want a control group, control group to compare to. So in the last example, our control group was the dogs that got dogs and cats that got the um, older food that we already knew was safe. And so if we're going to use this full fertilizer, I'm going to use a full dose in some plants and a half dose in other plants. We should probably have no dose. Uh, we could call it none. I'm just going to say none. Where we have no fertilizer so that we can compare, hey, how do these things grow when they have no none of this fertilizer compared to a half dose or a full dose? And so, again, to calculate the number of treatments, it's factors times levels still just three. Our treatments are going to be a full dose, a half dose, and none. And then the other thing here is we're getting some plants from Harris Teeter and some plants from Giant. And those of you who do any shopping, you might have your opinion on who has better produce than the other. And so what we might want to do is block based on the store that we bought the plants from. I don't know if Harris Teeter sells tomato plants, but they sell tomatoes. So I just chose these stores. <clears throat> so if we're going to lay this out, sort of an experimental design, I'm going to have 18 plants from Harris Teeter. I have 12 plants from Giant. I have three treatments that I'm going to apply to my Harris Teeter tomatoes. So I'm going to randomly assign six tomato plants from Harris Teeter to each group. One group's going to get a full dose of OptiGrow. One's going to get a half dose. And one is going to get none. They'll all probably get some sunlight and water. We'll do the same thing from Giant. Four plants to each treatment. Full dose, half dose, and none. So we still only have three treatments, even though it looks like we might have six. We have two blocks that are each getting the three treatments. And then we're going to come back here. Once these plants have grown and we taste them, we are going to judge, I'm going to say, their juiciness and tastiness. This is the response variable. 
we are going to compare the plants from Harris Teeter and see uh, if a full dose or a half dose gets you more juicy, more tasty tomatoes than no fertilizer at all. And we would do the same thing down here with our plants from Giant. Compare uh, how juicy and tasty those tomatoes are based on what treatment they got. So I want you to pause here and I want you to read this problem about uh, insomnia and then answer these questions and then press play and check your answers. So let me go through here my slightly sloppy answers. The subjects we studied were the 40 people who volunteered to participate in the study and it seemed like it was a requirement that they dealt with insomnia. We had two factors in this one, so different from the last two. So if you missed that, that's okay. There are two factors here, uh, whether or not the participant ate dessert and whether or not they participated in an exercise program. So there are two levels, which is yes or no, basically. Yes, did you eat dessert? No, did you not? Yes, did you exercise? No, did you not? Uh, the response variable we are measuring is the quality of sleep. So um, do they get relief from insomnia? Are they sleeping better than they did? And so we're going to end up with four treatments. We have two factors and two levels. Two times two is four. So we are going to assign uh, 10 of our participants to eat dessert and participate in the exercise program. 10 of our participants will be randomly assigned to eat dessert but not exercise. That sounds like fun. We'll assign 10 to uh, – this is where it gets a little sloppy because I didn't have enough room. Well, we'll have no dessert. That's what I mean by none. So no dessert, but they will exercise, and then no dessert with no exercise. And so basically – all the combinations of the factors and their possible levels. It doesn't seem like there's any blocking necessary in this experiment. However, if the researchers do decide maybe um, maybe age could have played a role here, maybe they could break the Florida volunteers into different age brackets or again, maybe gender. Um, but for now, it didn't seem like there's any indication that that was a concern. So no blocking done here. We have the four treatments uh, that we will then compare the quality of sleep. And it looks like those who ate no dessert and exercised. So this group right here, no dessert and they exercise. It looks like they showed an improvement in their sleep. Um, which is a good indication that if you're struggling to sleep, Cut back on dessert, add a little exercise into your routine. So if any of that lesson was a little fuzzy or needs uh, clarification, please let me know. If not, I have some practice problems for you. Please take your time on them while you're working through them. If you need some help or you want to discuss with somebody else or myself, please feel free. Take your time on these and good luck.